Hey guys, I didn't realize that the meeting actually started with the first person joining in. I think that's a, it's a setting in our Zoom that allows that. Hey there. Hey. Yeah, no, I, I saw that, it, I thought it was late, so I clicked on it and joined and then Jack was in there for a second. He's like, maybe when we clicked on it, we started it. Yeah, and actually. I said, well, yeah. maybe, maybe, but I, uh, <laughs> he said he wasn't going to be able to make it uh, uh, at this time and all. So he said he'd watch the recording. Cool. All right. So we got Derek. We got, we got Matan. What's up, guys? Hi. That's uh, well. And you? Good, good. Uh, trying to ease in into the the old activities of of the daily calls. <laughs> All right. So, for for this call, I didn't send out the agenda because I primarily wanted um, asshole, and we let's let's give it a minute for other people to join. Maybe um, let me ping some some people directly. In case they missed it out, because I haven't started sending out the the invites through calendar, just to make sure that we have the the structure back in place, so the meetings are less random, uh, as today's one probably will be still. But hey, Malavika. Hello. Nice, nice to see you hear you again. Hi. Thank you. Nice to see you. All right. Cool. So as you guys probably seen, we reactivated the, the progress document. So the, the goal for this was to, um, to re reactivate the list of all the projects and get the updates on what's happening on which. And um, we had some people adding to, to these, but I think we're, we're still missing a big chunk of projects that are uh, somewhere deep in the, the, in the DMs. And actually, since you, Malavika, uh, are here, maybe you could um, tell us a little bit about the task VT uh, subgroups. And because I know you've been working on the contradicting claims and, and yeah. other projects. Yeah, it would be great to kind of have a high level update uh, just to understand which teams are working on and then we can uh, kind of start filling out these. Yeah, sure. Um, I can give an update now on uh, the contradictory claims project, although uh, on a wider level, what's happening with VT is I think something that Dan would be in a better position to answer because um, I've sort of started concentrating more on contradictory claims uh, in the past two months or so. So I, I'm not sure what the latest updates are or even of how many projects otherwise are going on in VT. Uh, so uh, with contradictory claims, uh, the high level update is that we're getting closer towards um, uh, being able to publish our results in a conference or as a paper. Um, and we are at the moment um, sort of uh, waiting on some annotations that this company called Room Analytics is helping us with. So what they're doing is, um, what we've done is we've um, given them a set of uh, claim pairs and we're using their medical expertise and their general um, expertise otherwise with annotations to help us to annotate each of these pairs as contradiction, entailment, or neutral. Um, and we did a few rounds of um, inter-annotator agreements, revising guidelines, and so on with them in the past uh, one, one and a half months. And now, uh, just this week, uh, we sort of scaled it up to a thousand uh, clean pairs that we've sent over to them. Uh, so we're really looking forward to get their update. And um, once that's done, uh, our next step is really to um, uh, insert those annotations uh, and you know run a train validation round on the models that 
we've built so far. So yeah, that's where we are at the moment with Concrete Tree Games. That's awesome. Uh, quick question. Which channel do you guys use on Slack? Uh, it's just VT hyphen Concrete Tree hyphen Games. Let me just put that on the chat. It's a private channel, so it's uh, joined by invitation only at the moment. Got it. Um, do we want to, to kind of create the team contradictory claims uh, public channel so that more people can can join and, and find and figure out what how they can help? Uh, that would be nice, but uh, I would say at the moment, since we're really in the waiting phase, uh, we don't have much uh, help that we even need. So uh, probably we can do that once uh, you know we have a set of next steps that we uh, that we need more hands on that for. Cool. Um, maybe you can uh, add me to that channel at least. So, because uh, I wasn't even aware that, that you guys are progressing this much, which is great. Yeah, I think I discussed it a couple of times back when I was running the general calls and then it just sort of fizzled away and I think we were left with um, little communication on that. Awesome. And what do you guys use for annotations? Dokana? No, it's manual annotations right now. And Rome has their own software that they use where they uh, uh, they sort of uh, mark these spans based on which they're tagging each document uh, as such. So we've not really uh, interfered much with their process of annotating. Uh, mostly the discussions that we have with Rome are around uh, how we want to identify or um, tag a particular pair of claims as contradiction, what comes under neutral and the more logical and um, end user aspect of claims. Got it. Um, maybe you can share kind of the example of the, the current format or spreadsheets or, or something, because um, we're also trying to figure out a common infrastructure for annotations and how to, to make something usable for uh, medical researchers to help on you know, different projects like the team literature review and others. So it would be helpful to kind of synergize and, and figure out something mm -hmm. common. Cool. Yeah, sure, that would be nice. Um, I would have to check once with Rome because the slides that they've shared with us um, uh, are, are marked as confidential. So it's probably best to just have a quick word with them. And uh, we haven't actually seen the, um, their software firsthand being used either. We've only seen the slides on the calls. Uh, but let me check with them and uh, we can share that. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to fill in. Uh, as, as leaders, uh, I'm going to put you. Um, is there a coordinator or you're pretty much coordinating everything? Um, you can put me and Dan on that. Uh, we're both sort of coordinating it. Okay, and uh, and in terms of active members, do you have any other people helping yeah. you? Yeah, uh, yeah, we have. Let me type it on the chat. We have Harsh and Matan contributing at the moment. Nice. We also awesome. have Michael, and it's probably good to include his name, although um, we haven't really had any updates from him in the past couple of months or so, but he was um, uh, contributing quite a bit in the initial days of the project. Yeah, well, we should probably, Michael Wong or which one? Uh, hold on, I keep forgetting. It's Michael Ayers. Oh, the, the bio um, person, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got it. Awesome. Uh, probably worth reaching out to him and, and seeing, um, you know, maybe yeah, there's something. We did. we did, we did try that a few times over LinkedIn and um, Slack and otherwise email and stuff, but we couldn't really uh, get any response. So we just hope everything's all right with him. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we've not really been in touch with him. Okay. 
so in progress, uh, waiting for feedback from medical researchers on the contradictory claims data set, right? Um, I wouldn't say feedback from researchers. Um, we're waiting for annotations from uh, medical annotators. Cool. All right, this is great. Um, I think we have, yeah, we have Isaac, we have Akash. Um, maybe Isaac uh, would be great to, to hear an update from, you, from your side of things. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, with us, we're mainly, we just got the metadata stuff incorporated. So, uh, yeah, for a while we were creating models to fuse uh, kind of demographic data and uh, along with the actual case data and also geospatial data. So um, that was like a major thing and that was committed to our main repository too. So that can now be, um, well, at least version one can now be used for essentially any time series forecasting task where there's both static data um, and uh, temporal data. So um, yeah, that was the big work. Um, Kriti is like finishing up some work on probabilistic models. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and, and in terms of goals, we're like working to get a paper submitted to iClear, which is at the end of the month. And we're working to try to get a model deployed for case forecasting. Uh, or for, for our like forecasting dashboard um, in conjunction with search. So uh, yeah, that's the main stuff from us. Awesome. Do you need any help? Um, we could use, we could always use more just like skilled people with PyTorch and other frameworks. Cause yeah, we have kind of, we do have a long backlog of kind of tickets, some of which we've put off because uh, uh, just in terms of priority. So if we can, is it on, on GitHub? Um, yeah, it's on, it's on the project board. So if, no, no, it's actually on the other one. So like, if you go to that link on the left, it's on like that. And like, we have basically, yeah. So like we have stuff in progress and then, but yeah, actually there's more to our backlog than even that. Cause some issues we haven't even added to it, but it's already beginning to build up. But, uh, but yeah, so we could always use help just trying to clear out our backlog, but. Uh, so what kind of help? So um, people skilled with uh, PyTorch, um, uh, also, uh, also, yeah, in terms of infrastructure, we can always use people that are good with tools like Docker and Terraform um, for like more of our deployment side. Uh, would you be able to point um, to like top three priority uh, tasks from backlog? Um, so the top three priorities probably from there in terms of issues. Uh, well, the the biggest, so one is getting the inference, uh, is getting the kind of model deployment and Docker file finished. Um, I don't know if that's actually, yeah. Um, um, it would be great if you could jump into this document after the call and just fill out these. Yeah. And then we can um, send out the, the newsletter with specific tasks and maybe someone will, will take care of, of those. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll edit that a bit and then you actually include links to the actual tickets so then maybe then you could include those and someone could just awesome. get on them. All right. Um, Akash, um, so I know that you've been working on the uh, misinformation angle and kind of um, moving the, the existing Twitter analysis to our infrastructure. Uh, we created the channel called Team COVID Misinformation and there are uh, some people, including Pragit from the New Zealand um, govern like government related medical sphere. Have you had any uh, kind of like formalization of what you plan to work on for this project? 
Uh, right now, I think it is like moving uh, uh, it onto the CW infrastructure. The, uh, the requirement from Pradeep is slightly different. So I had a conversation with him regarding that. Uh, but I think uh, there's not much. Uh, I just jumped into this call. I just saw your message and I was actually, I sent you some message on Slack. Just have a look at that. Uh, but I just jumped into a call. I'm not really like prepared to talk about the projects. Got it. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, I mean, uh, so also, in, in, during the next call, I might give you some. Um, Great. So I would just put preparing for the next call to to give more updates. Um, and we could probably uh, work together to create this kind of a, the landing page, the overall goals of the project. So I'll check yeah. out uh, your messages to, to work on that. Cool. Um, who else do we have here? Um, Matan, maybe you can actually um, give a glimpse into the progress with the literature review uh, side of things and Camaradas initiative uh, we can't hear you like it's very very quiet it's always me uh, uh still in dungeon It's like, I think it, you're using the wrong mic or maybe you have to. Still no good? Still, we, we can try if you speak louder, maybe we'll decipher. I can switch microphones or access. Yeah. All right. We'll we'll mm -hmm. wait. Cool. And uh, we have Tina here. Uh, let's let's say we haven't um, we haven't worked with Tina for a couple of months now, but super excited to uh, reconnect. And we re-onboarded her into the Team COVID Questions, which is the initiative uh, regarding the the recent Q and A. Uh, challenge, um, the continuation of the Court 19 challenge from Allen Institute for AI and NIST and um, I think, yeah, National Library of Medicine and Oregon Health and Science University. Um, so this challenge kicked off uh, just a little bit over a week ago. Um, and the, we, we had a kickoff call and we started working on specific um, approaches to tackle the challenge. Um, maybe Tina, you can give us a quick, quick update from your side of things. Yeah, so um, just starting to get back in with the group, as you said, um, I don't have a large background in NLP, um, but from the meetings that have already happened, I've been reviewing the recordings and have gathered, uh, there's been a lot of resources thrown out there. So I've gathered all of that and set up a Trello board so that we can onboard people as the team comes together and people can kind of get oriented um, what the team is trying to accomplish, uh, what are some resources and tools that are being considered, um, maybe some other things that people need to be aware of. Um, I found, yeah, this example of an ER diagram for the for Mark 21 um, standard and the framework there um, in case folks aren't uh, necessarily familiar with that. Uh, a little bit about what is uh, knowledge graphs. Um, this is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. This is super helpful for, for people onboarding and Especially, you know, all of these like Mark 21 and other standards are, they seem to be super complex if you just, you know, if you've never worked with them, but once you get into details, it's, it's just a format. So pretty, uh, pretty basic stuff once you get familiar with it. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's, it sounds like we've got um, a couple of people looking at uh, trying to get into the Decano tool and uploading questions and sample data there. There may be a roadblock. Uh, is, it, is it Shrita? Yeah, uh, I think we yeah. have a roadblock for sure. And um, I think it's primarily because of the, the issues with Decano. So maybe we can actually, you know, um, drop the idea of using the Tana for these annotations and just use something else that is simpler and something, you know, maybe you can find any other tool that is um, like, you know, a, a subs subscription based tool or something that we can use for text annotations. I think that's a great idea, just so we're not roadblocked at this stage. Um, so when it comes to Decano, what's the problem? And is um, has anyone spoke to Slava about it? Hey guys, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, Perfect. you can. Cool. Hear you. All right. So, yeah, I was going to mention before. So Decano has been a, has been a blocker, uh, Decano and um, uh, Hypothesis. Um, so uh, there's something going on with uh, some some something with the networking certificates, uh, something like that. So. Um, but that should all be resolved by now. I think um, Anton mentioned to me yesterday. So um, I am going to make another attempt today to get an upload to um, Decano. Actually, there was an issue with Dataverse too with the upload. So um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, double check with both of those tools later today, and I can get an update in the channel. Um, and then with Decano, it's um, yeah you have you have to install it uh, and run it locally. So it's not like you can go through the web GUI right now, um, but okay. uh, but uh, there's and if you want, uh, Tino, you know, we can uh, or I can send um, the instruction from uh, Slava, where uh, you're you're just running it running it in in um, a, a Docker. So um, and you probably have all the infrastructure already installed, so it's not super complicated. So I'm personally not in the tool. Um, I think it was Shrita that was trying. Um, but yeah, that the instructions would be helpful for anyone that um, is attempting this task. Um, so I, I'm trying to stay, um, I'm, I'm here to help um, and, and I'm trying to stay at more um, just coordination level. Um, I have just um, completed a second master's degree and I'm currently stu studying for, um, for interviews. <laughs> wow. But um, <laughs> So I, I am um, uh, I, I'm trying to uh, just to stay connected and, and help out as much as I can, but I want to be very focused on, on how I do that. Yeah. Um, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, where are we? I, I'm just kind of like looking back and forth between things. So uh, forgive me, I'm not 110% focused on the call, but um, uh, I'll, I'll maybe ping you in a, in, um, in a channel or the DM just to get everybody's names who needs more information on, on doc on, um, the Kano. Sounds great. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks guys. So Matan, uh, maybe you could, uh, glimpse, a, a light on the kind of the, the current issues or roadblocks on the literature review NLP side of things. Right. So the idea from a couple of weeks ago was to, um, just get sort of a baseline process going and, and, um, um, yeah, and uh, so that's also about the time that we spoke with Camarades. So we wanted to use their data set uh, sort of as a, as a test case. Um, uh, but then we ran into the issues with Takano and oh, what are the issues using? Um, and the fact that uh, Camarades, they, they uh, I guess maybe they're perfectionists, they want to uh, complete the work on their data set before they, or the complete data set before they share it. So, uh, but, but we got, um, we got, we, we got a sample of it. So hopefully today, now that hopefully um, we'll be able to get Docker, um, sorry, to kind of up and running and then uh, go through a test case um, with, um, uh, with Alex, uh, who's been working with it, um, I think the most so far. Uh, so uh, plan is to go through it, see what makes sense, what doesn't, um, what's intuitive, what's not. Uh, take it from there, share the tool, uh, potentially get people like Camaradas to use it, even though they, excuse me, that's my mouth. Um, even though they already have a, a, a tool right now, but we'll, we'll see if we can um, use Decano to improve their, um, 
their AI that they use coupled with the, the human interaction. Yeah, so um, if assuming that the issues was the dataverse and the kind of our result, I feel like we should be able to upload uh, their data sets today, tomorrow, right? Yeah, ho hoping. So Dataverse, for whatever reason, it wouldn't complete an upload. Uh, and then Decano was just um, uh, not responding. It wouldn't, um, um, yeah, from the command line, it, it wouldn't, uh, the, the Docker Compose file just kept on throwing errors. So later today or after this call, I'm going to see if they're working now. Uh, and if they are, then you know, I'll update everybody um, and uh, we'll be able to start making progress. Awesome. Sounds like a plan. Um, and I assume you, you should be good. No, no help needed on, on that. As of right now, yeah, totally. Cool. All right. And um, we have Anton here. So maybe um, you can speak of the kind of the overall uh, team infrastructure, team cloud. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, so Mata will follow up afterwards with, with your issues. So we, uh, over the last two, three weeks, we were migrating uh, our infrastructure from our like old billing account that we already burned ready through. So hence why we get all of this slightly like uh, routing issues between services, because we can we transition some of the stuff was on Google Cloud, now some of the stuff on AWS, and AWS doesn't work to work with configuration that was on GCP, etc. So in a sense, we were struggling, but we're struggling to success doing so, because eventually what we're doing is we're building our robust hybrid cloud solution for open science. Uh, the main things right now, it's again, Dataverse, because Dataverse, we not only migrated uh, to AWS, but also Dataverse just updated to, to a new major release. And since we're using the cutting edge branch, so we have like the, the latest and greatest and all of the challenges that comes with it. So we, we kind of like struggle with this one. Uh, so far, I mostly saw that people like throw GUI access to Dataverse, you know, kind of dropping the upload or something, especially if the files are big. But I wonder like who has like programmatic problems accessing the, the Dataverse. So definitely ping me on Slack uh, for, for troubleshooting and figuring out like which, which areas uh, that don't work was as it planned. Uh, regarding Dakano, uh, I think it should work actually, because again, with Dakano, there were no recent changes from like two months ago, if it's dedicated instance. So Matan will definitely follow up on that. Uh, everything else is, again, we're moving towards uh, kind of having a robust backend to transition from kind of like our uh, collapse that we were using for, for, for like training, experimental jobs, etc. cetera. But uh, our goal is, well, one of the goals that we have is to have something similar to Google Collab Pro service, right? But obviously it's, it's not a paid service for, for our members. So we could kind of easily, quick and easy transition between, let's say, if you do uh, an example on Google Collab, uh, so uh, the free service, and then you can kind of like, oh, you know, I'm running out of RAM. Let me just run this load on a different runtime, you know, on a runaway runtime that we could kind of stretch to whatever needs, uh, needs we have. But that's still a work in progress, but I'm, I'm excited about that direction. Uh, yeah, so I think awesome. that's about it in terms of generic things. So Quick question, we have, sorry. again, struggling to success, I would describe our, our situation. So quick question on the, because I just mm -hmm. remember that we have the Protein Explorer team uh, with Sid and Nicholas and mm -hmm. Uh, I believe we were stuck on deploying the, the web app. Oh yeah, so that's another piece. So again, it's, uh, it's, it's a branch of our infrastructure that we're building so we could easily deploy like essentially web apps 
or like data science powered web apps. And with COVID portal right now, in, um, the issue is mostly, and again, kind of packaging that web app, which is like Angular, Django, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty complex actually in terms of uh, how it's structured. And now uh, the issues are kind of in between kind of making that uh, Protein Explorer work. Um, but again, it's, it's also work in progress. Do you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yeah, so this is actually yeah, yeah. an update from Sid, and they yeah. built this Spike Protein Explorer, which uh, doesn't make any sense to me, but to uh, re medical researchers it should. This is a way to navigate proteins, epitopes, and, and their structures or something. Might, uh, as well be wrote, might as well be written in Vulcan to me. It's just all, <laughs> all numbers and letters. It means nothing to me. Yeah, but uh, amazing piece of work um, by Sid and Nicholas, who's an, um, an HIV researcher, I, I think, uh, by, by trade, uh, but obviously super interested in helping uh, build the, the relevant uh, toolkit for COVID-19 and other viruses. So um, super excited to uh, eventually have a demo from these guys and understand how we can uh, integrate it into our kind of the overall infrastructure. Because I truly believe all of these things are um, kind of like um, meant to be integrated into one thing. So if you imagine researchers kind of looking th uh, through research for specific gene or protein, uh, they may as well benefit from a link to this tool to explore a very specific one or, or something like that. And again, I'm just spitballing here, but um, you know, it, it makes sense uh, in general. The same goes into contradictory claims and any other pieces of um, you know, these micro tools because we can um, integrate these into literature review as part of the additional metadata for, for the papers. And it will be great to, to start getting these um, demos in place. And hopefully once we establish this move from the Google Cloud to AWS, we'll have more, more time to focus on deployment. The, the great win with this uh, protein explorer that I personally like, really like is just, we are moving out of dependency of Power BI for every demo that we have over here. So, it's, it's not all on the shoulders of Mike Honey and like the rest of the Power BI guys. Uh, because again, it's, it's great to have decentralization of, of all of this uh, kind of yeah. what we do here. Yeah, and even though Mike Honey is doing an amazing job updating uh, the, the current proof of concept for literature review, uh, we are kicking off uh, initiative to start building the actual web app. And we had Dylan um, rejoin us, uh, also have been absent for a couple of months, but finished his uh, degree and ready to help us start uh, building the, the actual web app to integrate all of these, uh, all of these pieces of the literature review. Would, would a web app um, move away from using something like Power BI and into a custom made technology rather than just a, v, a BI? Yeah. So that's the idea to start building out what you guys have been working with the, the UX research and the, the Figma um, mockups and start replicating these in, in the actual uh, web app. So just so everyone is, is aware, we, we have these prototypes of how the, the user interface should look like. And um, obviously having something clickable and having something as a web page will be even better when showcasing this to, to epidemiologists. Um, by the way, I, so we are waiting for the update from the uh, Bryce Parker, that epidemiologist that we had a scheduled call with. Unfortunately, he's not able to do a demo, but he'll send us a documented process of how he does research. And also we got a second epidemiologist that is willing to talk to us, um, but we need to connect with her. Um, oh, nice. We actually have the, the connection here. So I'm going to call her 
today in an hour. And Might want to turn that off. That's a phone number. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll cut that off. Um, just realized. Thanks. That's a good catch. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. the, the moments of radical transparency where we actually need to be sensitive about the, the personal data. But um, so, so Chloe is in fact a disease epidemiologist and she works in the University of Southern Maine as a vaccine preventable disease epidemiologist. So it should be a very relevant connection and super excited to... Sounds, to sounds like a relevant person to talk to, definitely. It's good to hear. Um, yeah, let me know when that call is. I'll see if I can fit on it. Um, right. As long as it's sometime, sometime in the afternoon for me is best, really. But that's By the way, speaking of uh, the progress on organizational uh, stuff, um, I know we just talked about this yesterday, about building this updated full chart and visual guide, but maybe you, Tyler, had, had a chance to start working on that um no i've been um dealing with work stuff because i'm technically now i've come out of furlough and i i'm just waiting for work so i've been trying to sort that out more than anything and i'm still trying to work through coursework but it's going to be on my list of things to have a look at tonight awesome. along with um along with some coursework stuff yeah i'll put i'll make a note for myself otherwise i will forget because that happens Awesome. Sounds well, good. Out of curiosity, is there somewhere that I can go to see what data we have in the dataverse and as far as metadata on the documents, um, you know, what structure is there or what's available? Anton? Just to kind of see the, so, the progress or where somebody would go to see that. So you just go datasets.coronavirus.org make sure to put HTTP, not HTTPS, if your browser automatically like reroutes you, and you, okay. you'll, you'll access our whole data lake and all okay. of the data sets. And you will see like different like hubs or data verses as they call them, data verse uh, terminology. And they, we don't have fully organized it well, but mostly, for example, if you're interested in seeing what uh, our historical analysis team is doing, you will see like pandemics in history, for example. If it's, uh, for example, like guys from Decipher that are working on uh, also annotation and, and stuff, you will see Decipher Hub, et cetera. So again, it's, there is like this, some folder structure, et cetera, et cetera. You will probably navigate it pretty quickly. It's a good system. Great, thank you. Uh, what's the problem with the um, what's the problem with the security certificate at the moment? Uh, so AWS is for whatever reason don't issue the new one. So whatever everything is like whatever is hosted on on AWS right now, which is our data set of coronavirus.org that was previously hosted on GCP, AWS doesn't want to issue new certificates because something is still blocking it doing so from Google land because it's different uh, authority like uh, like centers that issue them so if you on one cloud you kind of depend on that one and since before it was on Google now we're moved to AWS and something still haven't propagated yet so AWS can get a hold of like oh you actually own the domain so we can't give you a certificate so something like this Maxim and, and, and I are working on like how to avoid relying on, you know, like cloud providers as authority issuing entities, but having our like other solution from di the different third party that independent of this mess. So every time we do like this, something vendor locks us and we're essentially suffering the consequences since we're like open source, open and uh, Struggling to success. This is my mantra for last couple of weeks. For that reason, the struggle is real. All right, guys. Uh, thanks everyone for jumping in. Um, great call. I think a great ease in into regular activities. And for any, anyone that is listening to the call, if you feel that your team is missing and we're not aware of something happening, just add it to the sheet. It's open for editing and. Uh, please list out all the things that you need help with and we'll take care of those. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.